Okay, um, welcome to term one week three, physics CA, very similar to the periodic video. Uh, I won't be recording the notes because the notes for this uh, is recorded separately. It's uploaded already, uh, one point five to one point seven. Um, I don't know. You can go over them if you want. But this periodic, any as this AMS is right after the periodic, and it's the same material. So um, that's why you know, I'm not recording. Come in the grids. I won't record them. Just go back to the course revision video. Uh, one point one to one point seven. Just skip to the part for one point five to one point seven, and watch. <coughs> anyway, uh, here we have three metals and a Bunsen burner. <coughs> There's a wax and a cork. Uh, the corks will fall off in different periods of time because of conduction. Which one will fall first? I keep the one that's the best conductor and the one that will fall last will fall from the one that's the worst conductor. So the first cork will fall off from the copper rod because copper is the best. Then the second one will be steel and the worst one is fiberglass. Okay. Question two. Can you open the open board? Uh, a fixed amount of a gas, okay, at constant temperature, PV over T. Constant temperature, yeah, any PV1, V1 equals P2, V2. Initially, the pressure is 200, and this volume is 4. The pressure is increased by 300. In order to calculate the new volume, what law are we using if it's a constant temperature? Remember, constant temperature, boiling, boils. Yeah. What's the new volume? Let's calculate it. 200 times 4 equals... It's increased by 300. They didn't say the pressure became 300. It increased by 300. So plus 300. So 200 plus 300 is 500 times uh, V2. You get uh, 1.6. <clears throat> okay. A sample of 70 grams of steel. Okay. They, stole us, they gave us the mass of steel. Uh, the specific heat capacity of steel and C of steel are a delta T and they want the heat needed so we don't Q. What is the formula? We know it's Q equal MC delta T which is going to be equal to the mass 0 0.07 times the C which is 385 times delta T 80 minus 20 60 which is going to be equal to by the way if you get this uh, this is AMS, so if you're watching, this is probably after the periodic, it's already too late. Uh, but if you ever get this in a written part, delta T, write 80 minus 20 better than just writing 60. Okay. Uh, 0 0.07 times 385 times 60. 1617, but they want it in kilojoules. So you make it, you divide by 1000, 1 1.617 or 1.6. Uh, what is true about evaporation? You know, it occurs at any temperature, okay? It causes the temperature of liquid to drop. When, when sweat evaporates from your skin, it makes your body cooler. At the boiling point, evaporation takes place anywhere within the body of liquid. <laughs> Lucky, because all of them are 100 degrees Celsius. Sweat could take place anywhere. Okay. Same experiment as question one, but they just added a few more. This time it's wax, and instead of the cork, they put a match. So which one is the best thermal conductor? It's the one that has that melts the wax, that causes you know when the wax will melt. That means the match will drop. Okay, so which one is the best one? The one that will lose its match first because its match would have fallen. Question six. Okay, here we have a uh, ammeter voltmeter. And a one kilogram aluminium block. Okay, the time is 210 seconds. They summarized all the necessary um, values here. The current is two, the temperature is delta T is three, voltage is 12, and the time is 110. They want the specific heat capacity. Okay, remember C equals Q over M delta T. We know Q is equal to IVT over M delta T, T capital T. So I is 2, voltage is 12, time is 110, over the mass is just 1 kilo, it's in the question, times the uh, delta T, which is 3, I think you get 2640, 
and then divide it by three. Uh, it's eight eight euro. I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 it's correct. Question seven. <clears throat> During a change of state, when you add thermal energy, we know it will not change the temperature, right? You know when we have the cooling curve. Here, this constant part, it's the change of state. We're adding energy to it, but it's not changing the temperature because it's changing the state. What do we call this energy that's added? Latent heat, right? Because it's hidden energy. It will not change the temperature. And I'm surprised you didn't ask any question about latent heat and, la and latent, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. Make sure you remember it for the exam. Huh? They might ask. I don't know why it's not in the quiz. <laughs> The heat energy supplied to the liquid at its melting point and during its change in state between points on 1 and 2 will increase what? Potential energy. Okay. Remember from grade 10. Here, kinetic energy increases. But potential energy, constant. Here, kinetic energy isn't changing since the temperature isn't changing. So kinetic energy, constant. So what will be changing? Potential energy increases. Okay. So potential energy, or you could say internal energy, because internal energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Question nine. So hot water is poured into a glass. Uh, which part will be hot? The inner part or the outer part? Okay, the inner part. And which one will expand more? Okay, if the inner part is hotter, then it will expand more. Because, you know, uh, solids and liquids uh, expand upon heating and contract upon cooling. Conduction is the flow of heat along matter without any flow of matter. This is a definition you must memorize. Okay, instead of heat, and I put thermal energy. Okay, it doesn't matter. You can put any. Okay. Question 11. Which element is the poorest conductor of heat? Remember we said it was water. If they put air, then uh, put air. Okay. Air is a very poor conductor of heat. And if they put vacuum, then put vacuum. Okay. The worst one is vacuum. Then it's air is the second worst, and then water is after that. Okay, but none of these were in the choice. So, so I know I'm surprised there's a lot of questions they didn't put in the quiz here. Uh, I commend the, about conduction. You know, gases are very bad conductors because their molecules are very far apart, as well as liquids, they're also bad conductors. The best conductors are solids, remember that, because they use the free electron method. Okay, remember that solids have free electrons that allows them to conduct heat. What else? Uh, the kinetic uh, theory uh, for conduction is that the hotter molecule will bump into the colder molecule. Okay, and it, since when they bump, it's going to give it the colder molecule. It's going to give it some kinetic energy. And I'm trying to remember the stuff that's not in the quiz. I don't know why they didn't put it. You know, maybe he's going to ask about it. A fixed amount of gas is initially at 27 and has a volume of 8 cm cube. The pressure is kept constant. Okay. Pressure is kept constant. P, V over T. P constant, yani V1 over T1, V2 over T2. Which rule is this? Nahna, we said it's Charles's law. Okay. A heat is not Boyle's law because Boyle's law is temperature constant. A heat is not pressure law because the pressure law is when the pressure changes. Here, the pressure is not changes. Okay, so a key, which one is it? Charles's law. Make sure you spell it correctly. You can just put Charles, or if you want to put the apostrophe, make sure you put it after the S. Okay, okay V1 is 8 over T1, and Kelvin is 300, 27 plus 273. V2 is, uh, don't know. T2, they said it's halved, so 150. Okay, you cross multiply, you get 4. Uh, okay, the initial pressure of a gas is 8, its volume is 12, its temperature is 27. For Charles law to be applicable, what do you need to be constant? The pressure and the mass. Mass, you always put it. You always, always put it. But now what do we care about? The pressure. Okay, pressure and mass must remain constant. If the volume of the gas is increased to 18 at a constant pressure, what will the new temperature be? Okay, so let's see. Volume is 12. Uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V1 E12 over T1, which is 27 plus 273, 300, equals V2, 18, over T2. You're going to get T2 equals 450 Kelvin. Because they're asking for degrees Celsius, so you subtract by 273 to get 177. Okay. 
14. Okay, they gave us the alphas for four different materials in order to make a thermometer with the largest bend. The largest bend, maneta, the biggest difference between coefficients. Okay, so we need which two strips, the biggest and the smallest, right? Because the biggest will expand the most, the, sm the, the smallest one will expand the least, hence it will bend a lot. Okay, so aluminium and iron. Whenever they say largest bend, they need the biggest difference between coefficients. Okay, the biggest difference here will be 24 and 12, so aluminium and iron. Uh, another bimetallic strip is made from the materials. This is in the table. This strip is heated and bends, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If strip one is made of silver, then what is strip two made of? Okay. Here, it's heated and it's go it's going upwards. Okay. Remember, it's if it's bending upwards, maneta, the one down is longer. Okay. If the one down is longer, maneta, it has a greater alpha, right? So they said the one up is silver. So which one? Saying, we know that the one down has a greater alpha. So which one has a greater alpha than silver? 18, which is bigger? 18, 24. So it's aluminium. Okay. 15. Okay. A bimetallic strip is made of copper and aluminium. Okay, over here. The coefficient of copper is 17 and that of aluminium is 24. Here, we have to label which one is which. Akid, there's a bigger circle that's on the outside and the smaller circle that's on the inside, right? Actually, the bigger circle will be the one that expanded more, right? They heated it. Heated it. Okay, if they said cooled, it would be the opposite. They heated it, okay, and became a circle. Actually, the longer one on the outside will be the one that expanded more. And in this case, it's the one that has the bigger coefficient, so aluminium. And actually, the one on the inside will be the one with the smaller coefficient, so it's going to be copper. Make sure to go solve the course revision questions. It will 100%, 100%, they're going to get questions from it because there's a lot of stuff in this quiz that we're not... Uh, sorry, there's a lot of stuff that we're not in this quiz. Okay, make sure you solve it. Thank you for watching. Good luck.